Hi, in today's video I want to talk about this Rheem Performance Platinum water heater uh, that I just bought. Uh, my current water heater is uh, 15 years old. I already had to replace uh, heating elements and I've uh, replaced the anode rod a couple of years ago. One of the reasons I decided to replace it is that this water heater is 15 years old and it takes about $411 to run it. Now, my garage is really hot. I live in Florida and my garage is uh, usually about 85 degrees, even though I have insulation. And this water heater is a hybrid water heater, which means that I have air conditioner on top of it. Because it has this heater pump, it also saves a lot of electricity. So I'm planning on saving a lot of money. And as you can see, to run this unit, it will cost me about $100 per year. On top of that, this is a smart water heater where I'm going to be able to monitor it with my smartphone. And another reason I bought it is they were on sale. So I paid not even $1,000 for this 40 gallon uh, water heater. And till the end of the year, you get a $300 tax credit. So after all the savings, Basically, this water heater cost me about $700. So it's a really great deal and has 10 year warranty. If you already replaced your water heater, you're probably used to connecting uh, all the connections on top of water heater. So this is a hot water, cold water, and this is for the overflow. Now this one has connections in totally different spots. So the overflow would start on the top, it's right here on the side, so that's a pressure valve. Your hot water connection is right here. Cold water comes in from the bottom. And then you have a drain also on the bottom. So if you want to do connection of this water heater, you'll have to change a lot of connections. In this unit, we have two heating elements, one on the bottom one on the top and according to what I see we need 30 amp fuses and upper element and lower elements are 4.5 kilowatts compressor on this unit takes about 12 amps this unit works uh, on 240 volts 60 hertz we have a three-quarter drain so this is standard three-quarter connection and i'm gonna try to get the top off so we can see what's underneath the heat pump on this water heater has a filter just like in ac uh, so you need to clean this periodically so here's what is inside of this heat pump on top also the parts Compressor, it's right here. Coil, I don't know why it's banged like this. I'll have to straighten those. Then we have a fan that's going to blow out the cold air out. And right here, we have anode rod. So you have a convenient access to it. I don't know how easy it's gonna be to remove it. But that's the location. And basically, this is the top of this rim water heater. While I have uh, the cover off, I'm going to straighten the coil. Uh, I don't know why it's banged like this. Uh, you may want to check it before you install it. So I'm just going to go and straighten those. Okay. I also want to show you one thing that uh, where the anode rod is located you have this plastic ring around it and there is very little space around it and I watched the video of one guy who was trying to replace the anode rod because he had a sulfur uh, gases accumulating in his uh, water heater tank. So this is 1 16th socket and if I push it all the way down as I tried before, I'm not going to do it again because this may get stuck. Uh, 
you really have to push it all the way down in order for you to remove the anode rod because as you can see there is very little space around uh, anode rod head and the plastic uh, thing that surrounds it. So what the other guy was doing is basically he chipped off entire plastic ring uh, to get to the anode rod. So if you have the same issue and if you cannot get to it you may have to remove the, the plastic surrounding to get better access uh, to an old rod. So look at this, this was left from the manufacturer, so I, I need to fix it. So before you put your water heater into use, double check if it came properly uh, installed from the manufacturer. Before you're going to start to work or any water heater, if you do not feel comfortable working with electricity or you don't know what you're doing, uh, hire an electrician or hire some professional person that knows uh, how to install water heater safely because I'm not responsible for any injuries or any damages to your property. Make sure there is no power coming to the water heater and then the next step we need to drain the water heater. If you also have a timer, please make sure turn off the power first double check with millimeter that there is no power so you don't get shocked okay now so i'm gonna drain the water here you open the valve right here and to let the water drain properly you need to open the valve otherwise there's gonna be a vacuum where it's not going to drain of course, make sure that uh, cold water valve is closed so you don't drain uh, the water that is going through the water here. So leave this open and the water should drain to the outside. As I can see, it is draining right now. Okay, so after a couple of hours of work, here's what I have. I had to change my plumbing. Everything was coming from top. Now everything has to be kind of on the side so my cold water supply is gonna go here and then it will join right here with the valve on the top outlet on the bottom it's gonna be hot water and this is gonna be a pipe connecting to pressure relief valve okay so everything's connected this is how it's gonna look like all the connections are in the back main shadow valve is right here kind of awkward position of uh, of those uh, connections but there's nothing i can do about it and i like to always have clear pipe going to the drain from the uh my heat pump i can see what's going on if there are any clogs and i don't glue anything everything is pushed in i can always clean this disassemble and this is going to be draining to my uh, washing machine drain. Okay, I'm going to fill it up and we're here is going to be working in a couple of minutes. I just turned the power on and you have the information it says disabled. So now what we have to do according to instructions is press on. Alrighty. I guess water here is working. Now it's the matter of just setting up different options. Now I have a water heater uh, running on energy saving mode at 110 degrees and heat pump has been activated and as you can see the air temperature that is coming out of the outlet is about 70 probably two and a half I can probably say that maybe it's gonna drop a little below so it's about 72 degrees uh, air is coming out of this outlet so uh, it will probably cool down a little bit my garage but not as much so don't expect your garage to be uh, livable after about 10-15 minutes of working on energy saver mode my uh, water heater has reached 110 degrees compressor has shut off and I have temperature right now, as you can see, about 
two degrees in the garage now ready to so my temperature in the garage is much lower than on the outside so on my old water heater I was getting kind of like a popcorn sound when the water was heating so I replaced this uh, heating element four years ago take a look at what's on it so here's a good tip every couple of years when you drain the water also check your heating element look how much stuff is on it that's what causing the heating element to become less efficient so you may want to clean it because then this is preventing your water heater from like I said work, working properly now this is my top heating element which I never replaced and this one actually is in pretty good condition so looks like the sediment is only setting on the bottom so this may be cleaned and reused still it doesn't look bad just the bottom one is the one that causes the problem now look at amount of sediment that is inside of this water heater it is huge amount of stuff on the bottom and this is part of my anode rod which right here uh, it's kind of worn out a little bit on the top is much better but see this is where the tank is nice and clean but look at all that stuff that is sitting on the bottom so other than that the water heater is in really pretty good shape I see no problems on the walls and anode rod was changed three years ago so probably I would have to say I would replace it if I had kept my water heater probably next year the top part looks much better if you can see this this is my anode rod I don't want to remove it now this is the top so the black part is basically like new if you have questions send me an email I'll be more than happy to help you and thanks for watching guys goodbye